Hi, welcome to Instrumental Analysis. We're working through a week on liquid chromatography, and this introductory lecture is to simply get you thinking a little bit about how liquid chromatography might be different from what we've learned about with gas chromatography. So what you see here is a liquid chromatography instrument. Unlike a gas chromatograph, which kind of looks like a, I don't know, a big oven, an LC is kind of this tall stack of lots and lots of different modules. And it's going to work and have very different components in a gas chromatograph. Its columns are much shorter. Of course, the mobile phase is a liquid, not a gas. So you have different kinds of handling pumps that you need and sources for the mobile phase. And it has a totally different set of applications. You're going to use liquid chromatography when you can't use gas. So if you can use gas chromatography, you try to, because in general, it's easier and simpler to interpret. And you can always put a mass spec at the end of it. That works really well. With liquid chromatography, you're going to generally be working with higher molecular weight molecules, things that have no volatility, so it has a lot more applications, but it's a much more complicated instrument. So roughly 23% of substances are analyzed by gas chromatography, which leaves the rest for liquid chromatography. And as I said, you can see it applied in biotechnology, in pharmaceuticals, in foods, all the way into materials in forensics. So it has an incredibly broad range of applications because just about anything can be designed to be separated and analyzed in a liquid chromatography. One of the ways that it's really versatile is unlike gas chromatography in which the separation mechanism is really this sort of partition of the analyte into some very thin stationary phase. The same idea is there, but in liquid chromatography, there's many, many more chemical interactions you can design between both the analyte, the mobile phase, and the stationary phase. Let's talk for a second just about the analyte and the stationary phase. So you can have a type of chromatography called adsorption liquid chromatography, where the solute or the analyte actually adsorbs and sticks and stays on the surface of a column. Generally, you don't want that, but you can then elude it or remove it from the column later. You can do what we're most familiar with, which is called partition chromatography, where you're partitioning thermodynamically into the stationary phase. You can do ion exchange, in which the nature of the interaction with the stationary phase is mediated by ions. You can do affinity chromatography, where you have, for example, I don't know, an antibody that recognizes a very particular type of biomolecule that can latch on to the biomolecule, and then you can actually change that interaction by then eluding through with a solvent that reverses that, that bonding. And then finally, size exclusion or molecular exclusion chromatography, which is different than all the rest because its basis for separation is not actually adsorption or any enthalpic interaction between the stationary phase and the analyte, but actually has to do with how the analyte explores the pores that might be present in a stationary phase. So here are some words that kind of build on the ones I gave you. So normal phase and reverse phase chromatography are two examples of partition chromatography, and they're going to be very, very important to us this week because they are really the workhorse approaches to doing liquid chromatography. So in normal phase chromatography, you're doing partition chromatography much like you did in gas chromatography. So analytes are going to partition into a stationary phase. In normal phase, your stationary phase is very polar. So you might have something that's like a silica and it's easily wet by water. But you're going to be running as a mobile phase, a nonpolar mobile phase like hexanes. In reverse phase, it's the reversed. You're going to have like a waxy stationary phase and you're going to be running a mobile phase like an alcohol or a water. Ion exchange chromatography is an example where you're using electrolytes or salts in polar uh, mobile phases to mediate and to kind of tune whether or not an analyte sees or doesn't see the stationary phase. And finally, the size exclusion or molecular exclusion chromatography, which really explores and separates on the basis of size, strictly. It's an entropic separation. So I wanted to just give you some of these terminologies because you're going to see them if you think about chromatography. And often people say, what type of chromatography are you doing? Well, you'll almost always start by saying, is it gas or liquid? Because that's a really functional difference in the instrument. But once you have a liquid chromatography instrument, by the choice of column in particular, and mobile phase, you can make it run normal phase chromatography, ion exchange chromatography, or perhaps even size exclusion chromatography. 
So the LC instrument is very versatile, and it can be designed to do all of these different types of chromatography. But when I look at it, and I look at the examples I see, both a lot of people using in industry as well as in a research lab, the vast majority are going to be pretty plain vanilla liquid chromatography, which is partition chromatography. So it's going to look a lot like the gas chromatography we talked about before with partition coefficients, although with some twists now because the mobile phase becomes important. And so in this graph, what you see is that depending on the molecular weight of the molecule you want to analyze and whether it's soluble in water or soluble in organics, you may choose very different types of liquid chromatography. You'll notice that if it's a very big molecule, you're pretty much stuck with ion, ex ion exchange in some very narrow instances or size exclusion. But if it's below about 1,000 or 2,000 molecular weight, you can use a lot of the conventional chromatographies and then either use partition or ion exchange or other ways of getting that analyte to interact with the column so that you can separate it from other analytes in the same sample. But as I said, our primary focus is going to be on normal and reversed phase chromatographies, which are examples of partition chromatography. If you'd like, we have excerpts from the book, Skugan West, Analytical Chemistry, now available, and you can go read about some of these other chromatographies in the very last chapter. But as far as I'm concerned for the quizzes and other assessments, I'm really going to be focusing on do you understand reversed and normal phase chromatography? And are you at least aware that there are some of these other methodologies that help you get at separation of analytes that may not fall in to this narrow class of smaller molecules that are mostly soluble in organics? Thanks so much. See you next time.